made possible through support from Autism Society of Colorado, Colorado District Attorneys Council, Colorado Developmental Disabilities Council, Developmental Pathways, and the Ark of Aurora. Think Change Talks. We breathe the same, we live, we cry the same tears, we bleed the same blood. Building Bridges, People with Disabilities and Law Enforcement. My name is Becky Bauer with Caring Community. We're a local PASA day program and residential agency in Aurora. PASA is a program approved service agency through the state of Colorado. I've been working with individuals with intellectual disabilities for over 20 years now. Um, I also have a 25 year old son who has some disabilities of his own. They gave her some money so she can teach us how to do that. Is that cool? Yeah. I think part of the problem is, again, uh, individuals with intellectual disabilities, that there's no tell. I mean, there's, there's no, it's, it's not like a person who may present with Down syndrome. Um, that's kind of apparent, or a person who utilizes a wheelchair, or a person who's using a walker. Um, a lot of our people with intellectual disabilities, they don't present that way. So you don't know. And so I think that's a big disconnect, is they don't know. And in the moment, um, an officer's job is to keep other people safe, but they need to be safe as well. They want to go home at night as well. So uh, giving them more information, the ability to make those decisions, to, to be able to say, oh, maybe there's something going on with this person a little bit different than what I thought. Um, just empowering them to, to know that and to have that ability. We always let officers know immediately that this is a person with a disability. Um, we yell it repeatedly until we're sure that they understand. Just, you know, some awareness that this is different. So we had a, a larger individual, um, a larger black male individual, who was having a really tough day um, acting out in a local park. Uh, became very, very unsafe for my staff and for the other individuals with them. Um, my staff had to call the Aurora Police Department to get some help. Uh, one unit arrived, they had a brief conversation, my staff had a brief conversation with the first officer. Um, they collectively together felt like he was probably not the best fit for what was going on, so they waited for the crisis team to come out. Uh, I arrived about the same time as the crisis team. I watched the individual charge at one of the officers. Um, immediately, my heart was in my chest, just beating out of my chest. Um, because it wasn't appropriate, he can't do that. Uh, and obviously, you know, and my first reaction was they're gonna take him down. And like, what choice did he give him? They did not. They made a circle around him, gave him a lot of space, talked very quietly to him, um, let him start to calm down on his own. Uh, when they did handcuff him to help keep him safe, uh, they used three sets so that it wasn't tight, so that he wasn't uncomfortable, he was just safe. Uh, allowed me to come and finish talking him down. I talked with him for about 10 minutes. They transported him. It was very low key, so to speak. That was very powerful for me to see. It was, it was amazing to watch how responsive they were to him and to his needs in the moment. They read him. Instead of just reading a book on this is procedure, they really gave, they allowed him some space, they allowed him some time. Really, de-escalation begins with just, uh, it's a change of topic. Just get their brain thinking about something else. Or what's your favorite movie? Um, you know, what's your mom's name or what's your sister's name? Other things you could offer, uh, something for them to hold. Obviously something safe. Give them some space and walk with them. Sometimes they just need that physical movement to help them de-escalate a little bit. Um, ask them what they need. Sometimes they know what they need teach them the words to say. I am a person with a disability. Please speak slower. Another thing is um, maybe have a note card that can be available so that they can give that to an officer that explains what's happening a little bit better. Carry an ID so that they always have it on them and teach them to wait until they're asked to take their ID out rather than to just immediately reach for their pocket just to keep them safe. 
I had an individual, we were uh, at Wendy's for lunch one day and he was really just really being inappropriate. And I had said to him at one point, sir, you're walking a fine line, meaning, you know, you're really pushing it. And uh, he got home that night and his mother called me like at seven o'clock. She's like, what did you say to him today? What happened? And so I'm like replaying the situation in my head. I'm like, I don't know, like, what's he doing? She's like, he's in the kitchen. He's walking the grout lines in my kitchen. I was like, oh my gosh, I told him he was walking a fine line, but I didn't explain what it meant. So he was very confused and he was starting to escalate because he was, he was walking fine lines, but he didn't understand what I meant. That is the one thing I've had to learn is be specific. I've often invited officers that are sitting in their patrol cars outside, come in anytime you want, come in, say hello. Um, let them know you are their friend because we have some that have had very bad experiences and so they see a uniform and the anxiety is, is real. So take, take small opportunities just to, to say hi, just to check in with them. To learn more about convenient and contemporary educational products through ThinkChange, visit www.thinkchange.training.